Hello and welcome to another What I Eat in a Day with Pre-Diabetes and Insulin Resistance video. And just like the last few of these that I did, I will be using my Freestyle Libre 14-day continuous glucose monitor sensor throughout the day to show you what my blood sugar is doing. But just to switch things up a bit, I also decided to use my traditional finger pricking glucose monitor to cross-check the accuracy of my CGM and spoiler alert, the results were less than ideal. I was feeling pretty disappointed with how my CGM was performing on this day, but I'll go into that more in the video. All right, so let's get into it. So I woke up this morning and I tested my fasting blood sugar at 6.36 and uh, my CGM and my finger pricking were way off. So I checked with my CGM first and it turns out my fasting blood sugar was 78 and I was like, um, yeah, that doesn't seem right. That seems very, very low, especially because I had sushi last night with white rice and I know for sure that that impacts my blood sugar for a long period of time. So I cross-checked it with a finger prick and my glucose monitor told me that my blood sugar was at 99, which I am betting is much more accurate. So this is the thing with the Freestyle Libre 14-day continuous glucose monitor sensor. What I've experienced is sometimes it is spot on with my finger prick glucose monitor and other times it's just way, way off. People who are in defense of the CGM say, well, the CGM is actually measuring your glucose through your interstitial fluid, which is like the fluid around your cells versus your blood. So there is gonna be a difference. There's a 15 to 20 minute lag time before the interstitial fluid matches up with what's happening in your blood. But that theory doesn't really work when I'm looking at my fasting blood sugar or my blood sugar between meals when I haven't eaten for a long time and there really isn't a large variance in my blood sugar. And again, this morning, 78 versus 99, that is a 21 point difference for my fasting blood sugar. And I just, it, it, it irritates me. But if you guys saw my previous video where I was walking you through my whole day with my CGM monitor, my fasting that morning was only two points off, 89 versus 91. So I really don't know what's going on. So right now what I think I'm gonna do is, it is 9.50, I haven't eaten anything from this morning when my sensor was 21 points off. So let's see right now what's happening um, and what the difference is between my finger prick and my sensor. So I have my glucose monitor here. It's just, I don't, I don't understand why it can be so accurate at sometimes and so inaccurate at other times. Okay, so my glucose right now is at 97, and let's see then what my sensor says. All right, so it looks like my continuous glucose monitor tells me that I'm now sitting at 86, which is 11 points lower than what my finger prick has told me. 11 points I think is a little bit more acceptable, but 21 points first thing in the morning, it just... <sighs> It's, it's too big of a variance and if I looked on my actual graph and I saw my blood sugar like going like this to try to stabilize that'd be another thing but my graph was flat which means I don't know why the CGM is being so inaccurate but a lot of people use the CGM more so for trends so finding trends in how your blood sugar is spiking depending on what you're eating. So if every time you eat potatoes and your blood sugar spikes really, really high on your CGM, even if the actual numbers are not super accurate, you know, okay, potatoes are just not great. All right, so I'm gonna start working here and I will probably eat my first meal of the day at around, I don't know, like 11, 11, 15, and I'll show you what I'm eating then. I'm not purposely like intermittently fasting, but last night I did have my dinner late, probably around I think like 8, 15 or 8, 30. So I'm just gonna not eat um, until around 11. All right, so I am eating my first meal of the day today. It's about 11.25 a.m. and I am just eating a leftover salad that I made for my kids yesterday for dinner. It is uh, butter lettuce, feta cheese, tomatoes, Trader Joe's um, black bean and corn veggie burger. It's really, really good. Um, so I have that kind of crumbled up in there and then I 
just put a little bit of olive oil and some lemon as the dressing. So I'm gonna finish that off. Then I have a fried egg here, which you guys know I love fried eggs. I eat fried eggs all the time. And then I have a piece of avocado toast, which is on a whole wheat sesame sourdough bread. This slice is pretty small. I put a little bit of butter and then about half an avocado on top. And if you guys saw my day one of my CGM blood sugar sharing everything with you video, you saw that I had a pretty big slice of avocado toast. I prepared it the exact same way except the loaf was probably twice as big and my blood sugar did spike. So what I have here today is probably about one serving and I don't think my blood sugar is going to do anything crazy today, but we'll see. Um, the veggie burger that I have in here is 22 grams of carbs for one patty. My guess is that there's probably maybe like a third of a patty left in the salad. So in terms of the salad, the carb count is quite low. The fried egg would be less than one gram of carbs, so we'll just round that up to one gram. The sourdough toast would be probably like to overestimate 15 grams of carbs plus nine grams of carbs for the avocado. So that would be the total carb count. And this one last thing. So I just got back from my nephew's birthday party over the weekend and my sister sent home with me macaroons, one of each flavor that she had at the party. So I am going to probably take a couple bites out of maybe all of them or eat a couple of these as my dessert. All right, I ate three out of the six macarons that I had and I couldn't find the nutrition facts for this specific uh, macaron company, which is Colette Macarons in San Francisco. Um, but I just Googled French macaron and it says that one macaron has six grams of carbs. So let's just go with that. So 18 grams of carbs in the three cookies that I ate. I wanted to eat all of them, but I um, <clears throat> showed a little bit of self-restraint. And what I like about macarons, or at least what I'd like to tell myself to make me feel better about macarons, is that they're made with almond flour. So yay, it means more fat and more protein to balance out all of the sugar. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we'll see where my blood sugar lands. All right, so my continuous glucose monitor says that I am at 118 here. So 118 versus 139 is a 21 point difference. Um, but you can see on my graph here, it says that my blood sugar spiked up to probably, it looks like 140. That's where I set like my top limit. So the top of that green line is 140. So maybe that means that I spiked up to like 160 after eating that meal. I don't know. I'm gonna keep cross-checking my scans with my finger pricks, but at this point, like today, it looks like I just have to add 20 points on top of all of my readings. I know and you know that <laughs> Macarons is not something that I, I really should be eating regularly as somebody who has insulin resistance, but I'm trying to stay away from using the language of should or shouldn't because in my mind, it really messes up kind of my headspace in terms of my relationship with food. So I really am trying this new thing where I'm trying not to be so restrictive with what I'm eating, especially as somebody who is not diabetic. I've had um, an A1C in the pre-diabetic level um, and for sure I do have insulin resistance and I was diagnosed with that after a glucose tolerance test slash insulin, what is the craft assay, assay, assay test um, where they measure your insulin levels along with your glucose after drinking a uh, glucose solution. So based on that, I am definitely insulin resistant. I have also had gestational diabetes twice. So definitely I do have metabolic dysfunction. Um, so I know what I, again, should and shouldn't be eating, but I'm trying so hard to not be so restrictive in my diet at this point right now because it literally drives me insane. All right, so I am two and a half hours post the meal that I had, so I wanna check my blood sugar again. So two and a half hours in, I am at 110 according to my um, finger prick. Let's see where I am with the CGM. And just a note, I have been working today, so when I work, I'm just sitting 
at a chair, not really moving. Because I'm not moving around after eating, my blood sugar looks like it's more elevated than it would be usually. So just keeping that in mind. All right, so my CGM, check. And my CGM says that I am at 90. So 110 versus 90, 20 point difference. It seems like my CGM has been reading consistently 20 points lower all day today. So again, frustrating. But according to my graph, it looks like it peaked and then it's coming down within a reasonable amount of time. So I guess that's okay. But again, for the rest of this workday, I'm just gonna be working, which means I'm not gonna be moving around like I would usually like to do. So it is what it is. That's what happens when you have work. You have to sit there and move minimally, which means higher blood sugar. So I just checked my blood sugar now. It's been a few hours since I've eaten and my continuous glucose monitor says that I am at 86, which based on the patterns that we've discovered today, I'm probably somewhere between 96 and 106. So there is that. And I wanted to share with you guys this resource that I discovered online. It's called the Stanford Cares Guide to Asian Nutrition, Lessons and Carbohydrate Consistent Recipes Curated for Individuals with Diabetes and pre-diabetes from Stanford Medicine. And it's really, really cool. It's basically an Asian diabetes cookbook, which is what the file name is called. It's 70 pages worth of information like carb counting, what does one serving of carbs look like in the form of rice, in the form of ingredients that are typically used in more Asian cooking. And this Asian diabetes cookbook is basically a compilation of different um, diabetic friendly recipes that different Asian dietitians have contributed and there are recipes like banh mi sandwiches, paneer frankie, um, eggplant adobo, chicken bento, uh, Vietnamese spring rolls. So it's really really interesting. I'll probably try out maybe a couple of these recipes to see um, if they are tasty. So I wanted to share that with you. In a little bit, I am going to be preparing dinner. And for dinner today, because I was away for the weekend and wasn't able to go grocery shopping on Mondays like I usually do, I'm just gonna raid my fridge. And I think what I'm gonna do is a chickpea pasta with chicken meatballs from Trader Joe's. These are new and I'm excited to try them. I'm gonna bulk up the pasta with some spinach for some fiber and add some cheese, of course, for fat and protein and I think it will be a pretty balanced meal so I will check back in with you guys after I eat that oh and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to eat a tiny sliver of apple that my son had left over from yesterday that's in the fridge right now and I just went to go grab it. It's actually two pieces that he had left over from yesterday. Super, super small. These are the Mickey apples from Costco. They're really tiny snacking apples. So this is probably like, I mean, it's probably a fourth of the actual apple, but the apple is so, so small. So I'm gonna just eat this with a little bit of almond butter as a snack before I start dinner. Okay, I'm getting more and more frustrated. Well, first of all, that pasta that I made was so good. I sauteed up some garlic in olive oil and garlic is supposed to be good for your blood sugar, so I always add it into the foods that I make. So I sauteed up the garlic. I had some um, a vodka sauce that I got from Costco that has very clean ingredients. So I heated that up. I used the chicken meatballs that I had mentioned from Trader Joe's and they were actually really good. Meatballs that are not homemade, the sodium count is high, um, but it tasted really good and my kids liked it. And then I used bonza chickpea pasta. Bonza chickpea pasta is pretty much all I feed my kids just to give them a little bit more protein. So, so I ate that and it, hold on, there we go. So I ate that and it tasted really good and I was testing my blood sugar and at the one hour mark and at the two hour mark, I was like, oh wow, this is pretty good. Like my blood sugar went up a little bit and it came back down, but then I cross checked it with the fingerprint and at the two hour mark, I was at 130. So my CGM is being really inaccurate today and it's making me really, really mad and upset because Again, it's like, what's the point of having this expensive continuous glucose monitor if I can't rely on it? Um, I'm gonna just keep kind of checking it 
to see if it stabilizes. I'm gonna be taking you along with me tomorrow as well, so we'll see if tomorrow is a better day, but so far today has been a bust. Um, just completely inaccurate readings all day long. I forgot to mention one last thing. So in addition to the pasta, I forgot <laughs> that I know why my blood sugar was very high at the two hour mark. So I ate some of this um, taro cake bread bun that my mother-in-law gave me. Um, it looks like this. This is what the thing looks like. It's very dense and very heavy like a softball. And if you don't know what taro is, it's kind of like a yam. It's a very starchy vegetable. Um, it tastes really good, but I had like... I think maybe like two small bites of this and I know that this definitely contributed to my blood sugar staying elevated for a longer period of time. I also ate like four pieces of fried pickle, which, um, you know, obviously battered and deep fried in a inflammatory oil also did not help with my blood sugar. So, um, wanted to mention that. I know, again, that I'm eating things that will definitely raise my blood sugar, and I'm trying to figure out what the balance is for me, and I, I don't know what that balance is yet of trying to be mindful of my blood sugar, but also not driving myself completely insane. So, it's a work in progress. I think there's going to be ebbs and flows. Sometimes my meals are really, really great and other times they are not like today for dinner. So again, I just need to figure out like what it is that I want to do and need to do for my mental and physical health. Uh, so as you guys saw, my CGM was pretty much giving me inaccurate readings all day long. And for someone like me who is really focused on the actual numbers, I ended the day feeling pretty disappointed. And so as a result, I decided to take a break from filming these what I eat in a day with pre-diabetes and insulin resistance videos with the CGM because one, I didn't want to feel like I was giving you all an inaccurate presentation of what my blood sugar numbers really look like. And two, I didn't want to have to keep cross-checking my numbers with the traditional glucose monitor in order to give you all those more accurate numbers. So I'm just going to take a step back and regroup. And I know this sounds really dramatic, but I just wanted to rip the sensor off and throw it away. I didn't, but that's how I felt. But despite my blood sugar numbers not really matching up, I hope that this video was helpful to you all, even in the smallest way somehow. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any upcoming content. And if you haven't checked out my channel, I have blood sugar experiments, I have healthy recipe ideas, so go ahead and head over there if that's something that you're interested in. All right, thank you so much for joining me today, and I will hopefully see you all next time. Bye.